you were there at the club with Sir Alex as the manager. How much interaction on a sort of how much, how often do you see him? Because there's obviously there's stories of his office overlooking the training pitches. So that because especially later on when he was there, he didn't take training. You know, he had people who took training and he would oversee it all. How much interaction was there? He wasn't an enigma. He he would mix with the you know he was. He knew the names of everyone at the club. You know, he he he'd go into the canteen and he'd speak openly with just the lady who'd done the breakfast in the morning, and he'd yeah. make them feel as important to the club as anyone else. They made everyone feel like they were buying into the success exactly. of the club. It, and it yeah. takes a manager who is assured in himself to be able to. A lot of managers are probably so wrapped up in what they're doing and 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 managing out of fear of. Oh, if I don't get the results, I'll get the sack. I mean, yeah, but, you know, by the time I was there, he'd kind of maybe turned that corner. But I'd walk past him sometimes in the office and he'd ask, how was your mum and dad? And not even mum and dad, he'd know the names. When I signed as, as a schoolboy, the whole family went up to Manchester and I signed with him in his office with the FA Cup and the... the the Premiership, but they, luckily they'd won the FA Cup and the Premiership the previous year, so they had down display not just a vase of flowers on the table. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but on the other side of things, when it, when it came to being told, you know, to find out what my um, what my future was with the club, even though I hadn't really had dealings with him on the football yeah. basis, we ended up having to line up individually and go into his office, which I'd never been in. In so I, you'd walk into the office. And you'd be like, it'd be well. It's just like my message just to go into this guy's office. You know, it's like, or well, it's like foreign to you. And then to be told then that you're not, your services are not required by the man you've admired since you were, yeah. since you were five. Then the falls much greater than it would have been if just my coach had pulled me to one side and yeah. said, listen, you know, you're not going to. Get off the new contract. I understand why he did it. You know, he's taking that responsibility. But yeah. I mean, the one thing I'd say then, once you find out that you're not required at the club, there's a weird thing. You know, you, 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 when clubs want you to sign, and this goes to probably every level of football, you're made to feel like you're you're desired, you're special. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like sell it. You know, it's like salesmen. You know, even the scouts. You know, even even the nicest scouts, they're still trying to sell the cl- sell the club to you. Yeah. And then it is weird. You realise you're no longer an asset to that club. It, it can be a very lonely place, and you know that, that it, it's great to have, you know, for those people who are who do prove the manager wrong and bounce back. But you've you've got to deal with that fall. And you know, I unfortunately I didn't I didn't know how at the time. I you know I'd wrapped up so much of my yeah. identity in Manu, and yes, yeah, statistically I wasn't probably gonna gonna make it there. But then. When when that fall comes, mm. you, you kind of you you're in this so prison and you chaos. Don't, yeah you don't yeah. know how to get out. I mean, it, I didn't have an agent. My mum and dad are not 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 in, from football, so suddenly you, you're just relying on United, just contacting other clubs to, mm. to say, listen, we've got these players who come available. I could have asked Ferguson when he when he said like, um, we're not giving you another contract. Why? But. When when Fergus is talking to you, you're just mad. You just you you rise, your mouth yeah, dries up, and, yeah. you, and you're just thinking, "I don't want to cry in front of him." Right. So we're at United now. When we started, the first team weren't weren't around too much because um, World Cup '98 had just been so a lot of the players that had like an extended break. So you know, but but the second years then, we started to mention you're like, "Are you just waiting till the first team back in the initiations?" Fresh elves, this gonna be <laughs> so. We, yeah. So we'd be like, um, well, we had to do jobs and stuff. So you know, I think my job was I had to clean the gym and stuff. And I was also um, washing and Gary Neville and Diggs was doing this as well. Um, but anyway, so so you'd, you'd have the call all first years to the first team dress room, and like you'd have all the all the first years trying to hide, you know, you know, wow. trying to hide in cupboards and stuff, and then you'd be kind of shepherded in. It's just like school. Yeah, so, yeah. so, you'd, yeah. Li- so you'd literally yeah. I walk into the first team dress room, and they're all sat around in the dress room. So all you got your Schmeichel, Keane, Beckham, everyone, all the reserves, like all squeezed into one dress room. You'd have like a fizzy bed in the middle of the room. And you're like, oh, this this 
it's not going to end really well. So what they do individually is get you up. You'd have to stand on the fridge in bed, and you'd have to like talk about how many how many girls you'd have sex with. You'd have to show your favourite position. You'd have to say what your best chat. You'd have to like pretend to chat up one of the first team players. I mean, they they do it to kind of like well, it's, it's a weird one really. It's to welcome you to the club as well, to show that there's no boundaries between us and you. But it's also to try and toughen your character. Ryan Giggs was the one who, um, who was leading the reading from front. So, you know, he, he was like, he had a very, like, Never very know. quick-witted, very dry. And, you know, he'd, he'd, like him and Nicky Butt together, they were like partners in crime. But wouldn't it be nice to have one of the more experienced players take a couple of the younger players and say, listen, this is what it takes. This is what to watch out for, you know. This is what life as a footballer is like. You didn't have any of that. Like that. But, but in a way, we're indirectly competing with them. It was so there's like no one sort of mentoring you, showing you how to, how to, like, on and off the pitch. There was no, like, a budding system in place. For them. No, not really. Yeah. And you, and you, I, mean, I mean, I think you think how, how important mind is in performance. And you mm. think, one, it's beneficial to the well being of the individual, but it's beneficial to the club as well because you're effectively maybe getting better performances out of the players. I mean you've got to realise, you know, some players are, are different to each other. Some players don't don't want you know, they, they want to be left alone. But I was quite a deep thinker, I was quite sensitive. So, you know, I, I you can't just suddenly switch off your mind, your yeah. self talk and stuff. And you, you know so so it would have been maybe handy to have Maybe when did you start knowing your character and what you were like as a person? Did you do you find yourself in that in that in that age? Like what? When did it the penny drop? Where you were, where you were at and what you were achieving? Um, it's a weird thing, really. You don't. I was always a bit of a perfectionist, so even when I signed for United, I wouldn't really even say I was like overjoyed. You'd be like thinking, right, what next? What have we got to mm. achieve next? And I was a kind of player that even if I had man of the match in a game, I'd still be like. Concentrate, focusing on the mistake I did, you know, and they'd be playing over and over in my mind and stuff. And you know how it is when, when you grow up, you think like the way you think your map of the world is the world. You, mm. you think mm. that is true. So Everything you, you think. That. I used to think if I had like a, a thought, bad thought about myself, I thought that's just me. That I'm just inherently weak for having that thought. Rather, so so then when you start painting that picture. And when you know I started suffering injuries, then your self talks even more because you're not out on the pitch. You, you're not. You don't feel like a footballer. You, you're kind of just going through this like really lonesome time of rehabilitation. That's when it's even more important to have someone. Effectively, I had to retire from football ultimately with a knee injury. But that lack lack of psychological fitness, I call it, has had like a greater impact on my life. Chadwick coming to it about Chadwick was lovely. He was like, you know, when he left the year above, like, mm. he was fucking brilliant. Mm. Like, he picked, you know, like McManaman used to do, like, he'd be a bit awkward, but he picked the ball up in mm. his own half and just skin the skin the opposition. I just don't know what. Yeah. It just didn't quite work for him. Mm.